Good day, this is Barry Halverson with the Lake Lawrence Lake Management District Steering Committee. This is the Lake Lawrence YouTube channel. And we're here today uh, interviewing Doug Carmen, uh, the chair of the Long Lake Lake Management District. Uh, Doug's been the chair for, what, 20 years? Close, uh, either vice chair or chair, one or the other. <laughs> the second longest running lake management district in the county. By one year. <laughs> When was the Lake Management District formed? In uh, 1986. And uh, how long has your lake been managed by Lake Management District continually? Continually since then. We actually did a lot of work, even we, I wasn't here then, but did work before 1986 on the lake. Okay. Did the county do that or the members? Members. Did you have a lake association before that? I'm not sure how it was formed, but they got together to, to eventually form the Lakes Management District, um, but with the milfoil issues and whatnot, they had to get started before we were in LMD. So. And how many times have you had to renew your LMD? Six different LMDs. And each time five, happened to renew and go yeah. through the process? Five at five, at at, at five year increments and one at ten. Did you have a lake association or other organization in place at the time? I think there was an association before. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll ask this question of lake associations. Uh, is a lake association helpful in forming a lake management district? Don't know because I wasn't there at that time, but I would assume that it would be because you have an existing organization to and people. Volunteers are very important in this whole thing. If you have volunteers that uh, can help you to form the group, form the LMD. So, with having to renew at least six times over the last 37 years with your lake management district, has there ever been an issue with making the uh, the percentage, the numbers to get the votes to reform? No, not really. We haven't. Um, although originally you needed. 10% of the of the number of parcels uh, in order to get a, uh, the Board of County Commissioners to agree to put it on the ballot. Uh, now they've changed it to 20% to of the land mass, acreage, which is going to make it extremely difficult, I think. Don't know yet because we haven't had to do it. But do you have some large acreages on the there's lake? Some, there's some large acreages or just number of people. Uh, with an LMD, uh, the, the lakefront owner, you, votes are counted based on the dollars you would pay into the LMD. And so the lakefront owners represent a greater percentage of the total dollars. So, um, But you have upland properties. Of, multiple uh, housing developments of 400 houses each, getting enough volunteers to get everybody's signature is physically impossible. So you have to rely on the HOAs to, to help you to in help, that regard. But, but they're not, they don't. They're so not vested. That's, they're not vested. So yeah. we have to have enough volunteers to go door to door, knock on the doors and sit down and talk, which is fun. I always enjoy it. It's, mm -hmm. it's cumbersome and it's time consuming. Right. But I've met a lot of nice people by going door to door and talking to them about the LMD. Okay. What was the single most difficult issue you encountered in forming or reforming the Lake Management District each time you had to do it? Okay. Typically getting the signatures, and it's not that people weren't willing to sign, it's just the time involved and the commitment that the volunteers have to make in order to get the signatures and, and get them submitted. In recent years, we've had a little more difficulty in the actual wording of the ordinance and, and some disagreements with uh, uh, how LMD should be run and how they've been run traditionally based on history and how things are changing. What has been the most significant water quality issue uh, your lake has experienced and how did you deal with it? From a water quality standpoint, the most significant is has been phosphorus which causes algae, so you have algae blooms. And we have managed that over the years with, with uh, some programs to do that. In 2020 though, we had a, a 
major algae bloom that, that actually was so strong that people, some people had to move into hotels because it stunk so bad that they were getting headaches and getting sick from it. But so from a water quality, it's uh, the formation of algae due to the amount of, of uh, phosphorus in the lake, which is caused, comes from our, the lake that is up from us, it comes from the water in the aquifer that's coming up through the springs and it comes from the rotting organic matter that's in the bottom of the lake that uh, much of which was deposited there by uh, sawmills uh, over a hundred years ago. And how have you dealt with the algae problem? We've worked, uh, typically in the beginning we worked primarily with aluminum sulfate. Uh, that was the uh, traditional way of, of working to remove phosphorus from the water. Aluminum sulfate does two functions. One, when you place it in the right concentration, it goes down through the water column and actually coagulates the sub, uh, uh, suspended solids that are in the water, including the algae, dead or alive. And it also combines with phosphorus to, com to form aluminum phosphate which is an inert mineral and settles to the bottom. Unfortunately, uh, we've learned uh, lately that it's not a permanent bond, so it can then later on release the phosphorus later. Um, subsequently, we've gone with a clay product, uh, either Utrasorb or Foslock, uh, which uh, strips the water column of phosphorus, and it also combines with phosphorus it's, in the settlement or in the, the muck in the bottom of the lake to seal the phosphorus permanently into an in, inert mineral um, so that we don't have to worry about that phosphorus in the future. And uh, But it doesn't coagulate any of the solids that are in the water so we still have uh, murky water, you still have algae in the water, dead or alive, um, but at least it's not going to be at a concentration that turn, can typically turn toxic. So it's basically is, just stripping out the phosphorus. Correct. And uh, it's leaving the rest of it there. Some of it's good algae, right. uh, some of it's not. And the alum treatment or the aluminum sulfate you're talking about, it strips out all the algae in the water column. Right. Uh, and maybe some, you know, other, just suspended solids in general. It'll strip that out also. And so, uh, so it, we have used a combination of the two with uh, alum, aluminum sulfate first and then Foslock and this last year we just used Utrasorb which is a stronger Foslock basically um, to, uh, without the alum so we just locked up the phosphorus. And you figured by doing that it wouldn't strip out the water column, the water column would still be a little bit murky so the weed problem wouldn't be as bad because you had that experience where you stripped out the water column, you got clear water, but then you had a lot of weeds that came. That's right. If, you got, if the sun can get to the weeds, they're going to grow like crazy. So our theory was, and perhaps still is, we're not sure, the jury's out, um, that by leaving some of the murkiness in the water, or turbidity I call it, um, the, the, the plants don't get as much solar power, so they, they don't grow as well. This year, we, although we had a lot of weeds this year, so, so even with the murky water, just by using the Utrasorb, you still had a lot of weeds this year. Right. But for some reason, the weeds didn't start growing until about the second week of July. Usually they start growing in April. Having been an LMD, Lake Management District, uh, under the revised code of Washington, RCW 3661, for 37 years, getting ready to start your 38th year. and providing advice and assistance to other lakes in Thurston County and around Washington State to become lake management districts. Uh, what would be a couple things that you would advise lakes that are looking at forming a lake management district? What, what would you advise them to, to do? That's a difficult question right now. Uh, yeah. uh, when Black Lake was forming their, wanted to form their district, my recommendation to them was to form an SUD rather than a than a, an LMD. And the, the reason for that was at that point in time our costs were going up exponentially and that my, in my judgment it would be uh, 
they would have more control and uh, could use their money more effectively as an SUD versus an LMD. Since then, we've got some of those costs uh, moved around and under control. Uh, but now, in the last few years, those costs have got be started to get out of control again. So I'm back on the fence uh, as to what type of organization is best for a lake man for managing your lake. Uh, because after all, it's our funds. We want to be able to spend that money as effectively as possible to accomplish the objectives of the LMD. And that's basically water quality, maintaining water quality to a point where the fish can thrive, where we can be confident our grandchildren swimming in the lake are, are safe and not going to get entangled in weeds and, 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 and as well as from a chemical standpoint, there are some people who really don't want any chemicals in the lake. Well, it's awful hard to manage a lake without some chemicals, but as an organization with a conscience, we can use the right kind of chemicals that don't impact or hurt our grandchildren. My grandchildren are so As to what others should do right now, it's it's there's a lot of work that we're doing, uh, at least a couple of lakes, like Lawrence and Long Lake, doing to try to fix some of the issues uh, for, with the RCW, uh, because it's it's kind of vague in some areas, so the county can uh, make some judgment calls that perhaps are uh, not with the way we would like it to be, uh, and it's certainly open to to uh, interpretation and so we're trying to clean those up so that there is direct specific direction from the legislature on how they really want this to be done um, and leave less up to the local jurisdictions. local jurisdictions because as you and I have found out from looking around the state the local jurisdictions a lot of them have a, a big difference as to how an RCW 3661 should be interpreted Right, and, and how they want to burden the LMD. Uh, there's some, you know, I mean, it boils down to a lot of little nitpicking things, but the nitpicking things add up to significant dollars. And, 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 and a number of jurisdictions and counties uh, look at it as the work the LMD is doing is significant for the overall county or the overall city, whatever jurisdiction it is. Or the state and or all the, the citizens state. in it. That's right. And so they want to not overburden it with overhead and things that our regular co property taxes should be paying. Um, and then there are counties who want to um, burden the LMDs with all the overhead just as if they were another department within the the uh, a, a county or, or jurisdiction and, uh, and uh, charge them all those overhead fees that, that, like I said, your property taxes should be already paying. Okay. Uh, is there anything you'd like to end with today? Just that managing a lake is a difficult process. And it takes a lot of dedicated volunteers and the time to learn the science and technology of, of life of lake. Um, and when you know that, there are a lot of things you can do to actually help the lake be healthy. And uh, without that, those volunteers, without that knowledge, uh, it's difficult to do the job without just throwing stuff at it that may or may not work and may be good, maybe might not be. Um, so, become an LMD, you need to have a committed people who, who are willing to spend the time, put in the effort to actually get the work done that needs to be done. Well, Doug, thank you for sitting down with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Barry. Good luck in two years when you renew. 